Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to get a free extension that will allow you to render marker regions to clips. All right, first things first, a shout out to Christopher Johnston at PC Tech TV for giving us this free extension. Hey, don't thank me. Uh, Chris contacted me and we started talking about scripting and he has some great ideas. So he, he had this created and uh, sent this out. So at the end, I'll show you how to uh, connect to PC Tech TV, get a link in the description to download this and I'll show you how to install it. What this is basically doing is taking any, any marker regions, and I, I have a whole tutorial on working with markers, and it exports that out. Now, typically, if you're going to have to export out little pieces of the timeline, you'll set an in and out point render, in and out render, in and out render. Well, this uses markers, which you know you can save and render out. You also get to pick the name, the location, and the, um, uh, the, the, uh, preset, the, that you're using. So let's go have a look. So here I've got uh, some videos from Adobe Stock and some music from Artlist. I've got different marker regions set. I'll show you how to set a mar another marker region here. So I'm gonna tap the M key for marker and tap it again. And anytime you tap M twice or M over top of a marker, it opens up the marker. So um, I'm just going to type speed this up. And this is a comment marker. And by default, markers don't have a duration. You have to have a, a duration to render out. Otherwise, it's not going to render. Well, I guess it would render one frame. But we want to render out a region, a beginning and an end. So I'm just going to drag this out to a duration, click OK. And when I do that, I get a marker region, which I can drag out here. So you can't drag them out when it's set by default. Uh, with one frame. So now I've got these marker regions. All I need to do is go to the window menu, go to the extensions, and Chris's extension is called Median Coder In Out. And you can see it gives us some choices. First of all, the folder. So pick the folder for output. You can type the uh, location here, and the location is the uh, is the actual path name. It's just a lot easier to click here and we can find a path. So I'm going to put this in my um, test folder. And you can see it's written in the location. Choose a file name, and I'll call this test video, and pick a render format. Now this is a little bit trickier here. I'm gonna show you two ways to do this. Um, there's no right or wrong. You can just, you know, pick whatever way works for you. Chris's example will allow you to find a, uh, a preset on your computer. The problem with the presets that Media Encoder, uh, Premiere Pro, and Rush, and After Effects, they're buried inside folders that you're not really intended to work with. I'll show you where they are. So it's going to be the same on the Mac. I, I saved a shortcut here on the left in Windows uh, where they are. And you can see the names of these folders are pretty crazy. So it's in these, the Media Encoder folder. There's a folder called Media IO, and in there is a folder called System Preset. And when you open them up, you'll see some of these .epr files. So you can actually export these out of Media Encoder. It's a lot easier that way, or I'll show you how to change all of them at once in Media Encoder. But anyway, this is where they are, and you can copy them out of there. Don't move them out of here, but copy them somewhere else. So pick your output format. You don't have to, but if you click here, you'll get, again, another dialog box, and I'm going to jump to that folder, and I'll just pick this, um, Uh, yeah, let's do the 720p, click OK. And you can see it's a, a location. So it's, this is the same path name. So it's not the name of a format. It's a path to the .epr file that's going to be used. If you leave render now unchecked, then it won't render immediately in the next step. So there are my choices. Pick the folder, choose a file name, 
pick the output format and uh, Media Encoder, click that. It launches Media Encoder if it's not launched. And there they are. That happened to be a Blu-ray uh, preset. Remember, when I was looking in those unnamed folders, I have no freaking idea what they are. So this is the preset that's used. You can either use Chris's method or you can select all of these and click on any one of these and you'll get a warning saying you're going to change it for all of them. Click OK, sure. And here I'll choose H.264. 720. Okay. And you can see all of them will change to that format. So this is no different than working in Media Encoder now. It's just getting the stuff in here. Uh, there's the location and the name. All I have to do is click go and it's going to start to render. All of these. One after another. So there we go. Each one is rendering out. Okay, and we can go back to Premiere Pro if we want, but those are the marker regions and that is the marker in and out extension panel that you call up. So anytime you have different markers, it's going to render out those areas. And if we go to our markers, like I said, I do have a whole tutorial on working with markers. So all of those markers are saved in the project and you can render those out. So if these are specific um, areas that you need to render out and pull these out of a, a larger clip, it's a heck of a lot easier than taking them and, and uh, moving them to, to different sub clips and then dragging those out and rendering that out. So let's go see um, our export. And you can see it's clearing them out when they're done. So there's my video clips right here. All of them have been rendered out. Each one of those render regions. Each one, boom, 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 boom. So let's talk a little bit about Chris. This is uh, Christopher Johnston. He's a computer technologist, specializes in programming, web development databases, audio, video, animation. You can find out more at PCTechTV.com. So thank you so much to Chris for uh, making this available. It's incredible. Uh, we just connected uh, online and uh, he said, do you think this is useful? And I, I reached out to a few people on our Facebook page, which you should be connected to. And uh, people said, yes, uh, I've been wanting this. In fact, uh, Chris made this because he came from Sony Vegas that has this render regions feature. Premiere Pro sure could use this. Um, maybe they should add this to the application. So ex these are extensions that you can add that, that increase the functionality of Premiere Pro. There's a link in the description of where you can get it. Now, if you have some difficulty with configuring Premiere Pro for whatever reason, don't message me look in the description. So I will update the description with any um, links to areas uh, that you need to go to, like Adobe Help that, that would uh, help fix some things. It should just work. And of course, have the latest version of Premiere Pro um, and drop that in. Now, where do you put this in? So once you download this, it is a zip file. And when you unzip it, it's another folder. So open up that folder, download it, and put it in this location here. So this is back to the Premiere Pro folder. In there is a folder called CEP, and in there is an extensions folder. This is Chris's extension, it's just a folder, and if we open that up, you'll see all the pieces in here. Don't touch any of that because that's what the extension is, you just need to drop it in the extensions folder. So this is the same on Mac and Windows. Go to the application folder and find the Premiere Pro uh, folder, CEP extensions, drop it in. Of course, make sure that you 
don't have Premiere Pro running uh, because it loads these extensions when you boot up uh, Premiere Pro. So quit Premiere Pro, unzip it, stick it in here, launch it, and then go and look in the window menu, extensions, and this is where you'll find that and you can see it resets the name. It resets all of those fields right away every single time. The one last thing I want to do, uh, the one thing uh, that you'll notice is that the last render region, there's an in and out point that's part of the script. Uh, so you can clear that in the markers, clear in and out, control shift X or command shift X to get rid of that. It, it doesn't really uh, impede you from editing. It's just a way to, re to remove that last marker. So, wow, Chris, thank you so much. If you're gonna, don't thank me on this. Make sure that if you're commenting, you're thanking uh, Chris. He's a great programmer, a great friend of us here on Video Revealed, and we thank him so much for making this extension possible. All right, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, please take a moment and subscribe. Hey, if you wanna support us some more, you can do that as a PayPal donor. There's a link in the description and on the front of the page. And we have such a wonderful community of great people that support us, um, either through PayPal or wonderful people like uh, Chris, who uh, really do reach out and give us all of this free functionality. So thanks a lot, Chris. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and I'm here to put this all together to give you the best choices when working with Adobe Premiere Pro.